We start today with our 2024 lead and a shock endorsement in the Republican race for president. Tonight, South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, a former presidential candidate himself, will endorse Donald Trump, a source close to the Trump campaign tells me, and a video that Tim Scott just posted makes very clear. That's a very public repudiation for the former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who personally appointed Scott to the U.S. Senate. Now, this is the kind of endorsement you might usually expect after the New Hampshire primary, closer to when South Carolina is scheduled to vote, which is at the end of February. But uh, one political observer suggested that it, it's possible Trump, the Trump campaign is just trying to blunt any more of Haley's momentum, anything left, and put the nail in the coffin of this race as quickly as possible, as of New Hampshire. Sources say Governor Haley's campaign was caught completely off guard by the announcement. Haley released a statement saying, quote, interesting that Trump's lining up with all the Washington insiders when he claimed he wanted to drain the swamp, but the fellas are going to do what the fellas are going to do. We should note this announcement doesn't come without some calculations from Senator Scott's team either. As one source tells me, close to the Trump campaign, Senator Scott is on Trump's, quote, medium list, as opposed to short list, for vice president. CNN's Omar Jimenez starts off our coverage today from the campaign trail in Goffstown, New Hampshire. And Omar, not the kind of announcement the Haley team wanted to see as they go into the last weekend in the New Hampshire primary and blitz the state for every last vote. Not at all. I mean, we saw a number of Haley events over the course of this morning. And when reporters were trying to ask her for her reaction in the initial phase of things, she ignored those comments before, again, later on releasing that statement that you just read. And uh, as you mentioned as well, Tim Scott posting a video uh, on X on social media on his way or outside of the Trump plane, making his way uh, soon here to New Hampshire, where, again, that endorsement is expected to be announced at a Trump rally rally tonight and potentially, as you mentioned as well, could slow Nikki Haley's momentum or at least an attempt to in this final stretch of the primary. Four days to go. We are super excited. All the candidates are back in New Hampshire. Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley and Donald Trump are making their final pitches to voters heading into the last weekend before the primary, one that Haley says carries enormous weight. This is a wake-up call for the Republican Party. Haley hit a number of events Friday, trying to find every bit of support she can. Thank you for having me here. Amid a mountain of a task, defeating Donald Trump, who's now expected to pick up the endorsement of South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, a source familiar with the plans, tells CNN. Haley responded to the news in a statement saying Trump's lining up with all the Washington insiders, as the former president is not only hoping to repeat the results in Iowa, but also beat back Haley's threat in New Hampshire. She's not going to make it. She has no chance. She's got no way. Megan's not going to be with her. And He's continued to single her out, even calling her names on social media based on her birth name, Nimrata. The name calling, I know President Trump well. That's what he does when he feels threatened. That's what he does when he feels insecure. It's not going to waste any energy for me. I'm going to continue to focus on the things that people want to talk about and not get into the name calling back with him. Haley has polled within single digits of the former president in the past month and has increasingly focused her attacks on him. The reason he's throwing these temper tantrums is because he knows I do have a chance. The reason he's doing this is because he knows he's not able to defend his record. She sees the Granite State as a two-person race, as DeSantis appears to have scaled back appearances in the state, but hasn't fully disappeared. We're excited to be here. As he stresses, the road for him doesn't end in New Hampshire. And we're expecting to hear a little bit more from DeSantis. Actually, just behind me here, you can see uh, this huge gathering uh, of reporters. He was supposed to be here 30 minutes ago. Um, so uh, these reporters here are waiting for them. I'm going to go back and join them uh, in a second here. But what's significant about that is obviously DeSantis scaling back his campaign a little bit here in New Hampshire. This is really his return to the state since he announced that. But his campaign has stressed that they are in this for the long haul. And they are looking beyond New Hampshire because, of course, they see the writing on the wall at this point and believe they have a better chance later down in the primary schedule. All right, Omar Jimenez in Goffstown, New Hampshire, of course. Thanks so much. My panel's here uh, to discuss. Uh, Amanda, how big a blow do you think this endorsement is? I mean, you know, politics tough, but, I mean, she did appoint Tim Scott to the Senate. He would be in the House right now probably if it weren't for her.
Yeah, and not to say that Tim Scott necessarily owes her because of that, but that video that he just posted at Axe where he's standing outside the Trump plane, it feels like he's digging in a little yeah, bit. And, four, and to go, more years yeah, did. and to go give a speech in New Hampshire as Nikki Haley's trying to close a very big gap, it, it seems a little extra, but that's what Trump likes, right? He likes to pit people against each other, say, Tim Scott, let's give a speech, I'll give you a ride in the plane, welcome to the fold. This is how it works. They're all falling in line. That's what Trump likes, but that's the kind of stuff Trump demands, sure. too. Uh, Jake, look, Trump's the leader of this party. He's going to be the nominee. I'm a boring guest. I don't think this... <laughs> I don't You're think not a boring guest. Oh, I am. I don't think there's a race. I don't think there's ever been a race. Tim Scott knows that. Maybe he wants to be VP, too. What, what do you make of it all? Listen, I mean, this is a betrayal, certainly to Nikki Haley. You pointed him in 2012. Uh, and this is also following 2017, when Tim Scott, after Charlottesville said that President Trump was morally compromised, right? But we see, to Joe and Amanda's point, everyone fall back in line. And we have all those clips that we play uh, where all these candidates and, uh, you know, Tim Scott has, uh, has called out the president numerous times. But, of course, he's back on that plane headed back to New, New Hampshire to take some of the steam out of Nikki Haley's sales. And we should note there are a lot of Republican officials who are still worried about Trump. Not Forget the, the moral grounds or the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, at January 6th, for, forget all the all, prin the all the principled yeah. reasons, because just they, they think that he would be bad for the Republican Party. We heard Eric Erickson say a few days ago, it's going to take so much money and that the money that would be devoted to Republican Senate races, Republican governor's races, Republican House races. Um, and, and we've just heard a lot of people say that now new polling today from Marist found among New Hampshire voters. Biden in New Hampshire would beat Trump by seven points. Biden would beat DeSantis by nine points. And Haley would beat Biden by three points, still in the margin of error. But what I think is significant about this is in Iowa and New Hampshire, they've been paying attention. In a lot of different parts of the United States, people are living their lives. They don't even know that it's likely going to be Trump versus yeah. Biden. Like they're, they're, a lot of voters are surprised to hear that. New Hampshire voters know differently because they've been playing in this. That seems like ominous news for Republicans. It does, Jake. And to your point, it's not just that they've been paying attention. They've also been inundated with those ads that most of those battleground states are going to see uh, come November, framing this argument between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Nikki Haley is out there with ads right now comparing the two of them and that it's a time for change. And we'll see if that resonates uh, with voters in New Hampshire with four days to go. But most, yeah, it, go ahead. Yeah, it's just, you know, one thing that I think is particularly bothersome about the Tim Scott endorsement. I mean, you know this, you know this, for many years he was built up as the sort of new conservative, happy, optimistic, everybody likes to be around him. And Should he ran he be, that campaign. Yeah, right? absolutely. He wanted to be that optimistic right, conservative. Sunny. But then through this campaign, he sort of nodded to the weaponization of the DOJ, and he is going to lend all his credibility to putting this gloss on Trump's retribution agenda and sort of normalizing it, making it to be okay. And they're all right in the fact that Trump is not as electable, but they're still going to lend their personal credibility on this and help close the gap in a presidential race. Because it's just too late. And Jake, they know it. He's going to be the nominee. And most Republican voters think he's the most electable in November. That's what Do these you? guys hear. Do you uh, think he's the most elect electable Republican? I think he's the only Republican who can win in November. Really? Period, mm. Jake. And the really? reason, the reason <laughs> is, if he's not the nominee, Jake, he takes his toys and go, goes home. Because he'll take voters sure. with Oh, them. God, yeah. 30% of his folks will never vote for the Republican nominee. It's too late for anybody else to be the nominee. It's interesting. Uh, Kevin, you helped launch No Labels back in 2010. That's right. They've still, that organization has still not ruled out putting a candidate in this race to, to challenge Trump and Biden, if those two end up being the nominees. We've heard names such as former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin floated as potential third party candidates. What would that do to the race as it stands? I mean, there were even uh, conversations with Nikki Haley, uh, with Joe Lieberman, who's one of the founders of, of the organization. Listen, I think that's one of the biggest fears with the Biden campaign, right? It was a head to head race in 2020. Less than, I think, 0.2% of Americans voted for a third party in that race. Not unlike 2016, where you had Jill Stein, others siphoning votes from a sec most likely Secretary Clinton. So that is a big fear with the campaign, folks that I talked to about that, not just because 
you know, you got RFK out there. He doesn't have ballot access at this point. He's rejected uh, calls for him to run as a libertarian. But the fact that No Labels is putting in the groundwork, $70 million, a lot of money we don't know where it's coming from. We, from the money that we've been able to find, it's a lot of Republican Trump backers to get that ballot access and then hand it to whoever that candidate is. That's the greatest fear for the Biden. To candidate. hurt Biden. To, to or hurt Biden, somebody Biden, hijacks to that Biden. ballot access. I mean, they don't exactly necessarily right. control it. There's a lot of work going into this effort. And listen, I think we'd have a healthier system if we had more parties, but it's a very misguided effort to try to do this from the top down without a candidate to begin with. If you want to build a political party and really do it, you have to start with some kind of principle, some kind of grassroots, bottom-up thing. Yeah. And until that actually happens, I fear you're not really going to have a successful third party. With transparency baked into that, too. Right? We got right. to Where's the money coming from? And the best exactly way to be right. Trump is one alternative, the Democratic nominee.